Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Welcome to Advanced Digital Camouflage for Microsoft Excel. In this video, I'm going to show you a few advanced tactics that you can use to gain a little bit more control over your patterns with conditional formatting. If you haven't already seen the previous video, go back real quick and take a look at that so you kind of have a better understanding of what's going on. But let's get going. I'll set up a string of numbers from 1 to 50 to use an example for each case. I'll create a new rule for this first string of numbers and it'll be based on their values. I'll use a two color scale and I'll choose my minimum to be the lowest value and my maximum to be the highest value. Let's set the colors to be white and black. You see that we get a smoothly graduated scale that runs from 1 to 50. In this example we have 50 shades of gray. Puns are always intended. It's very difficult to tell the difference between adjacent shades. This might be useful. If we highlight everything and drag our numbers, you can see how the level of graduation changes accordingly and evenly. If you go down to 10, you get 10 evenly spaced shades. You get the idea. Let's go back to 50 and copy this for another example. Highlight it, conditional formatting, manage rules, current selection, and let's choose percentiles for both. If we go with 10 and 90th percentile, you can see that it graduates faster. Go with a three color scale, 49 white, 50 blue, and 51 black. Make sure you have a 50% value, so we need an odd number of values, and everything below 50 is white, everything above is black, and blue right at 50. You can play around with conditional formatting a lot to get the colors that you need. Now I'm going to show you several ways that you can modify the randomness of your cells for certain applications. Let's set up a 10 by 10 grid of random numbers using the rand function. Now of course these are not actually zeros and ones, but the decimals won't fit in these tiny cells. Let's apply some conditional formatting from the 33rd to the 66th percentile and we'll go dark and light green. Now you can see we have several, but not many shades of green because our percentiles are separated into thirds and it's a rather even distribution of colors. I'm going to set up another grid next to this one, but I'm going to use the ran between function. This generates integer values between the values that you specify. So let's pick 0 and 9 so we only have single digits and they'll fit in these cells. Apply the same 33rd and 66th percentile formatting as before and we get the same color distribution. Now here's why ran between function can be more useful. Let's copy this ran between area and change it to between 1 and 3. Let's change our formatting from lowest to highest values. You could also use percentiles that would cut it off. I'm going to pick a yellow this time. Only three different shades now. What if you need a variable shading because you needed to match a natural shading? Simple enough. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. In the green example on the left, you can definitely see that the bottom of the pattern is darker than the top. This is because I've inserted an offset into the rand formula. The upper third has this subtracted offset and the lower third has this added offset. This serves to bump the random values up or down by the amount in these two cells down here. If I change these values, you can see how the contrast in the pattern changes. You could also change where the rand plus offset actually occurs in your sheet. I just divided it vertically into thirds for simplicity. But if you use values that are too far apart, you can see an obvious dividing line, which typically you wouldn't want, since our eyes can easily pick out straight lines. Another strategy is shown in this desert pattern on the right. I have a column of modifier cells down the left side here that range from 1 to 63 by 1s. My formula for each row is then rand times the value in this modifier column. So as we go down, the values are multiplied by larger and larger numbers, so the pattern fades evenly and randomly from light to dark. The formatting for this region is lowest to highest values, creating many different shades of tan. You could have your colored cells reference a carefully crafted set of cells somewhere else, like I did for my title screen. You could also add modifiers horizontally and combine the two so you get a diagonal gradient. There are many reasons you might want to do gradients like these. The main reason I could think of is that gradients naturally occur. Plants and animal colors vary to make them blend in better. Feet might be different than the head, 
and the tops and sides might be darker than the bottoms. Leaves are different on top and bottom. One thing you can do to ensure that you blend in best is to take a photo of the environment you'd like to blend in with. Then use Photoshop or even Paint to pick some of the colors out there, then dial those into Excel and you have a custom pattern for your environment. Maybe you could get a car wrap company to print one for your truck that you take hunting a certain time of year. Or you could get some wraps for some outdoor gear. Who knows? Just don't blame me if you can't find your car. Or you could just print some camo on sticker paper and add a personal touch to your things. Well, this definitely concludes the camouflage tangent with Microsoft Excel. I hope that all this was a little bit uh, informative so that you can create your own camouflage patterns. Or at the very least, I hope it was a little bit entertaining. Because who'd think you could create camouflage with Excel, right? Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can stay updated on all future projects. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.